In this session, we are going to cover a very important and critical topic of uh, web logic, which is called the migration of the web logic. Okay, and from on premise to the cloud. So, on premise in the sense, uh, your traditional data centers, if you are running your uh, web logic on the traditional on prem data centers, and then you are migrating to the cloud. And it's not specific to the cloud, even if you are uh, migrating the web logic from one environment to environment, other environment. Okay, and irrespective of the the infrastructure, whether it is on cloud or whether it is on on-prem or maybe it is the migration from one data center to the data center. Okay, so how we can do the complete end-to-end -end migration of the WebLogic server? Okay, so in WebLogic server, we have a lot of uh, uh, resources that we have configured in the domain, right? Uh, starting from we have a multiple binary servers, we have a clusters, then we have a multiple deployment, we have a multiple JMS configurations, some modules, modules, JMS servers, and then data sources. Right, so we have a lot of uh, configurations in one of the domain. It's not feasible to to go in the new domain and then do the all the configurations from the scratch. Right now, apart from uh, migrating the content, when we go for the migration, there are a lot of content that is specific to one environment and may not be uh, may not be applicable for the other environment. For example, you will have a data sources with respect to the data sources. We will have a uh, password and then we have a multiple. Uh, host information, port information, okay, and if you are going for the migration, then our database and the password of the users may get changed and that need to be reflected accordingly in the new environment, right. So, if we have a multiple data source in, in the environment and then we are going to uh, change the every uh, thing like host, uh, password and everything from the scratch, it's, it's, it's a very uh, hectic uh, work you can say to, to do everything from the scratch right so it's not specific to data so if you go for the configuration of the other resources as well in the environment then it's not feasible to do everything from the scratch so for that we have a multiple solutions there are a lot of uh, in-house solutions as well for the migration you can have your own script as well but i'm going to talk about a, a important uh, uh, open source tool that is uh, from the uh, oracle Okay, so there is an open source tool from the Oracle which you can use for the migration of your uh, on-prem application or to the cloud or maybe from uh, migrating the web logic from one environment to other environment or maybe from one data center to other data center. Okay, so let us talk about uh, the tool which is there for the migration. So that tool is the uh, with the name WDT in the short form. It is called Oracle WebLogic Deploy Tool. So this is an open source tool which is developed by the Oracle and which you can use for the migration of your WebLogic server. So when we talk about the migration, that means the complete environment from one environment of the WebLogic, you can migrate to the other environment, either on cloud or anywhere. Okay, and it has the capabilities if you would like to change any of the configurations before the migration, which is completely different from the existing environment then you can modify that information as well before the migration okay so if you are planning to migrate your web logic from on prem to oracle or any other cloud or environment then you can use this wtt tool which easily migrate your web logic resources configurations using wtt okay so that means uh, including the configurations you may have a multiple applications that has been deployed in your environment so it automatically take care of that as well it it create the backup of the applications along with your configurations and it deploy the the application in your uh, target environment as well okay so it is an open source project it provides scripts that enable you to discover and export the configuration and application files from one oracle weblogic server domain and then import the configuration and application to the other existing domain okay so it provides a bootstrapping mechanism for creating a model and archive file by inspecting the existing domain and gathering configuration and binaries from it so it is uh, the process of uh, gathering the information it is something called a bootstrapping which completely <clears throat> gather the information uh, from the source environment and then create a different uh, files okay with the configurations that we use for the migration to the target environment it export a domain configuration as a metadata file and automatically exclude sensitive information like password so when we discover the source environment with the help of this particular tool it create a metadata file which will contain all of the resources of the existing domain and it will exclude the some sensitive information for example if you have defined a password for at somewhere like for we have defined a password for the data sources that this metadata file will not include the password so when updating a domain you also provide a metadata file this file need to describe only the resources that you want to add or update okay so that means when we extract the information from the source environment 
okay, which contain the complete uh, snapshot of the resources that you have in your source environment. And if you would like to change any of the values in your target environment, which is not applicable uh, in the target environment, but was applicable for only for the source. So that configuration that you can change in the metadata file, and then you can <coughs> import the configuration in your target environment. So if an application is already deployed, the tool compare the binaries and determine whether the application need to be redeployed. That means if you are going to deploy your application along with the tool, because as I said, it automatically take the binary, uh, the deployed file as well from the source environment and then redeploy or deploy in your uh, target environment. So if any of the application is already there, okay, then it will compare the binaries and then it automatically take care of that, whether the, the, the file from the source need to be deployed or not. These requisites are very simple. You will have a source environment where you will have a web logic is running and then you have a multiple resources are configured in your source environment. And then target environment will be a new plain vanilla environment of the web logic server, okay, where you would like to migrate the source configuration. Now, when we talk about the downtime uh, uh, requirement, so it doesn't require any downtime. The migration process does not affect the availability of your existing web logic environment. That means if you have a source environment is already running, it will not going to impact that one because you can discover and export the configuration from your source Oracle web logic server domain while it is running. The web logic deploy tool does not modify your domain or significantly affect it performance. So you can only run the script, discover script in the source environment when your server is up and running, your environment is up and running. It, it will just scan your uh, complete configurations and then based on the uh, scanning, it create the uh, different files for the migration files, which we can you can use for the migration in the target environment. That means it will not going to impact your current existing source environment. Okay, so after a service instance is migrated successfully, client can be rerouted to the new environment. So you, uh, when you you uh, export the configuration from the source and then you migrated it in the target environment, and once you are satisfied with your complete UAT, user acceptance testing that your target uh, target environment is completely up and running perfectly, then you can uh, reroute the traffic from your source environment to the new target environment. Okay, so it's not going to impact your existing environment. Okay, so uh, you can run. Uh, this is script multiple times or you can say you can run the export multiple time or any time whenever required from the source environment because it is not going to impact the current running environment. Okay, so download and install is a very uh, simple, it's an open source tool uh, which contain multiple scripts. So you can download from the GitHub. Okay, this is the official repository of the uh, open source repository from the Oracle, which there's a link that you can see on the screen. So once you will extract that uh, tool, you will get uh, certain directories and files inside that one with bin, etc, lib, samples and license.txt and version.txt. These are the directories and files will be there once you will install the tool. So just a zip file, you just need to download and extract in a particular location in your operating system. To install the software, simply unzip the weblogic hyphen deploy.zip installer on the machine that has a desired version of the web logic server installed, right? So you have to install it on the target as well as source version. So in the source, we will run the export and then in the target, we will use the import. So that means you have to install it on the source as well as on the target environment, right? After being unzipped, the software is ready to use. Just set the Java home environment variable to point to Java 7 or higher JDK and the cell script are ready to run. So only dependency this tool has, you have to be a certified Java, which is 7 or higher. You can uh, download the Java 7 or 8 and then you can set the Java home. So if, you're, uh, if you have a WebLogic server, then you should have Java already in place. Okay, so you don't need to worry about that. Now high level action plan, how to execute uh, the export and import of the configuration and in between we would like to change the configurations as well. Right? As I said, uh, multiple configurations may not be applicable for your target environment and some of the configuration parameters you may need to be changed. For example, you would like to change the uh, the database host and user and password as well because uh, when you migrated your uh, web logic to the cloud and maybe your database host also gets changed. So in that case, you may need to change the host port or some user and related password information as well. Along with that, uh, you may need to change some more configuration. So before migration, you need to change that configuration as well right? in the configuration file so that it can be reflected in your target environment. So the very first uh, action plan is discover the Oracle WebLogic server domain on the source instance. So we have to run the discover command in your source instance. And once you will run the discover command, it will completely create the multiple metadata files with the complete snapshot of the configurations of your source domain. Copy supported uh, uh, supporting files to target instance. So whatever the files that has been generated by the, the discovery command, you have to copy it on the target instance, right? And then edit the domain model and copy it to target instance. So 
after that you can uh, edit the domain model okay and copy to target so copy we have already done in the step two okay so you can ignore it so what you need to do here in the step three is you have to edit the domain model file that means domain model file is a is a yaml file that will be created which will contain the complete snaps and any snapshot of your source source environment okay and this file you can modify manually for the configurations that is required or not required in your target environment okay update the weblogging server domain on the target instance and then we have to run the update command and before running the update command we will have a verify command as well whether because we change the yaml model file manually okay uh, we may do certain mistakes manually in that file because we are updating it manually so before uh, running the update command we can run the verify command as well so verify will execute it and then it will uh, validate all the syntax whatever we have defined in the metadata file in case of an error it will give you an error so before going for the updating of the domain you have to update or change or modify or rectify the errors that you have encountered in the model yaml file and then you can update the target domain by running certain command which is there in the wdt tool so once it is done you can start the services and then you can test the services on your target environment okay so let me quickly uh, show you the different commands okay how we uh, execute the command and then what are the files that we get the first command is the discover uh, of the source domain so the command on you can see on the screen the script to discover the domain is discover domain.sh and after that you have to provide the domain home location then you have to provide the middleware home location this is for the source environment and then you have to specify the model file name okay this is the model file name that i have given .yml my instance underscore domain .yml file and then archive file this is a zip file where it will zip all of the resources that is there in your domain for example you have deployed multiple files as well so as i said it automatically take care of the uh, deployment of the files as well so in zip in this zip file it will completely uh, copy all of the uh, the files that you have deployed in your source environment okay and then you have to specify the domain type app jrf so it will uh, exclude all of the standard deployment files or the standard uh, templates which is there for the weblogic server it will look for only for the custom configurations so once you will run this one you have to make sure the output should be server equal to zero and warning could be one warning could be one or more okay you can rectify the warning later but you have to make sure that once you are running the discover domain the server is zero okay if, if it is not zero then you have to uh, rectify that one what exactly is causing that you can see in the output of the command okay and then you have to copy the the supported files like you the yaml file and the zip file that the two files you are getting with the discover domain that you have to copy both files in your target domain okay and once it is copied the main configuration file is your yaml file so you have to edit the yaml file and there are certain uh, uh, rules are there for updating the yaml file some standard rules are there what exactly you need to remove so some of the configurations you can do according to your environmental uh, configurations but some of the rules are you have to follow as defined by the oracle okay for example you can see on the screen uh, you have to remove the following applications from the model file like the uh, aura ga smon sample applications auth management app these are the sections that you need to remove from the yaml file because it completely creates the end to end screenshot uh, snapshot of your source domain so some of the content which is which is it has taken from the source domain uh, may not be applicable for your target domain because each domain has their own configurations as well right so for that you have to remove certain kind of a uh, generic configurations which is domain specific from the yaml file and for that you can follow the standard uh, oracle documentation okay that i will show in the execution presentation when i will go for the execution of the migration of this session okay and then apart from that you have certain more content like you can see that find and remove all the occurrence of the following attributes you can remove the listen address node manager and password encrypted credentials encrypted front end host because these are the specific to that particular environment when we talk about the listen address so listen address will be the specific which is to the target environment right so you can remove the listen address and then encrypted node manager password parameter okay so these are the certain parameters that you need to remove and along with that there are certain more rules that you have to follow when you are updating this particular yaml configuration file before importing in the environment and if necessary find the name of all server cluster and machines in the model file and replace them with the corresponding server cluster and machine names of your target instances okay so in your target environment if your manage server name cluster name machine name or any uh, such parameters get changed if it is not exactly the same as you have in the source environment then in the yaml file before importing you have to change the server name cluster name machine name etc according to your target environments okay so these are the some of the important configurations that we do when we modify this yaml configuration file and there are certain more rules 
based on the the configurations of your domain okay if you have a data source if you have a ssl is configured or not based on that you have to follow certain more rules as well right and then if your source instance include custom java database connectivity data sources then provide the location and password of the application database so what happens is that if if you are uh, domain contain the data sources as well so as i said uh, this tool will not take the sensitive information from the domain during the export during the discovery so it will create a certain sections for you in the yaml file okay and according to that you have to specify the new password by configuring it in a properties file for example if uh, suppose that we have exported the content resources from the source domain now uh, we would like to import in the target domain and we have a certain data sources and we have to change or we have to give the password as well for the data sources because it has not taken the password information from the source domain so we will create a property file for example wdt.properties file in that we can define the different parameters for the each and every data source password for example if you have a two data source in your environment then you can define two variables data source one dot password equal to the password uh, of your data source one then data source two dot password equal to the password for a data source two and this data source one dot password and data source two dot password these are the variables that we are going to assign to each and every data source section in the yaml file okay so as you can see on the screen uh, inside the password encrypted we have given at the rate at the rate prop then colon data source one dot password so here it will take the password which we have defined for the data source one dot password similarly you will have a section for the second data source as well for that such a source you can define the data source two dot password variable in the same format okay and in the url attribute you have to give, define the complete jdbc url of your data source okay so this is how we define the uh, data source values in the yaml file and along with that we create a, um, a custom wdt.properties file which will contain our password information okay and then as i said you have you can run the validate model command so you can run the command validate model.sh with the parameter oracle home which is your middleware home then the model file yaml file which we have taken from the source environment then the name of your archive file that we have received from the source environment and the variable file wdt.properties which we have just created which will contain our data source password information okay and the domain time will be grf so this will validate the complete end-to-end -end domain and if all good it will give you the success and then you can go for the updation of the domain and to update the domain you will have a script called update domain.sh and the and, and and the format is and then you have to give the location of your domain with the hyphen domain underscore home variable then you have to give the oracle home location the name of your yaml file the name of your archive file okay and then the variable file wdt.properties which we have created for storing the password right and then domain type which is grf so once you will run this command and if, if everything is all good then your in uh, the information or your domain will get imported in your target domain then you can start your services and then you can verify if all of the configurations are there or not and these are the supported version of the weblogic server which is uh, which you can use for the migration with the help of wdt tool so these are the supported weblogic versions and the corresponding supported jdk versions thank you